Next was Zoe. Yeah, so this is actually related to what you guys were just talking about. Um, I've been thinking a lot about I've been thinking a lot about intelligence and what that means. And one way I have of defining it is like your effectiveness in solving cognitive problems. Um, and so if you learn the principles of objectivism, you learn how to think in essentials, you learn how to integrate and reduce, you're more effective at solving problems. Have you made yourself more intelligent? What would it mean to not be smart, but to be very effective at applying the principles of object objectivism and the other way around, what would it mean to be dumb, but know how to think effectively using objectivist principles? So, yeah. Well, I, I think that's absolutely right. And it's why I am so adamant about my objection to IQ tests as being the defining measure of intelligence. Yeah, I mean, Q, IQ probably measures something, mainly how well you take an IQ test, but it, it, it probably is a proxy for something. But I know a lot of people who have a significantly higher IQ than I do. Who are, who are less competent at solving problems than I do. Integrate, worse, reduce, you know, just bet, worse thinkers. Now, what's more important, that they have a higher IQ, a higher horsepower, or that they can't solve problems? And even so problem solving, would diff each one of us is different in terms of the kind of problems we solve, right? I, I know, you know, do you know some of these consulting firms when you go and interview them, you do a job interview like at, at Booz Allen or, or McKinsey, they, they put you through these, these kind of riddles. And I'm terrible at solving those kind of riddles. Really bad at, at solving on the spot in an interview uh, a riddle. I've got, I've got an employee who works for me at the hedge fund who's brilliant at it. And, and I'm, I, if I interviewed with him, he does our interviewing. And if I interviewed with him, he would never give me a job, right? But give me a problem in the real world where I have to, where I can use, in a sense, uh, uh, organized people and help solve that problem and get it, the work done, I can do that better than most, right? But I'm not a widow solver. So some people are brilliant at that, but can't do the other. Right? So it's intelligence is a multi-dimensional thing. Um, and objectivism is a comparative advantage when it comes to solving problems and therefore it enhances your intelligence. So um, a static measure like IQ, I think is, is, is means very little. And even in the correlations that people find between IQ and so-called success in life, IQ explains maybe 20 or 30% of the success in life, which is a lot, but it's not everything. There's a huge uh, other part of it. And you know what it doesn't explain? It doesn't explain wealth. It doesn't explain how much, how much wealth you have created in your life. Um, uh, IQ is not very highly correlated with that. So uh, that's why I, I, I agree, Ori, we, we need broader measures if, we, if, if, if it's even important to have a measure of intelligence. They have a lot more to do with how you think and the impact education has had on you and the choices you have made of whether to be engaged with reality or not. Choice should matter. And IQ is too static, too passive. Maybe you're like born with a potential for how yes. effective you could be and then based on the but way- even then in certain things, right? So, so Mozart at the age of I think five or seven could hear an entire complex piece of music once, go back to his room and write it down verbatim. Mm. And then compose something similar or something amazing, right? They, at incredibly young ages, Mozart created amazing things, right? I don't know if Mozart could have uh, was good in science and math. I don't know if Mozart would how we would have done on an IQ test. I don't know what is spatial, you know. Uh, 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 no, I just don't know, and nobody knows, right? You but he clearly, clearly was a genius, right? And so we might all even be born with different potentialities in different places. That is, those parts of a brain that have to do with music and and might be more developed in a Mozart. You might have it more developed in math or more developed in something else. I don't know. But we know so little about the brain still, just the, the brain, never mind the interaction between the brain and what we call the mind and consciousness, that it's still very early to be definitive about measures of intelligence, right? There's so much more, so much we don't know. I mean, that's one thing I find with so many people out there is that it's like, it's the end of knowledge. It's like everything we know now, we know with certainty. You have to learn what we know, 
and, and how confident we should be in any piece of knowledge that we know. And it's not to say some things are not certain, but there's so much, particularly in psychology and evolutionary psychology and evolution and exact, all of that stuff is still work in progress. And anybody honest within the field would admit that. We know so little still about the brain. We know hugely more than we did 10 years ago, and yet so little. Thank you. Sure. Zachary. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.